It looks like Co-op and Forge will be coming at a much later date than previously expected and 343 explains why and how the new rumors of 343 working on a non-Halo Infinite game might be true and a whole lot more so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again, giving you another news and informational video. We have some rather interesting topics that we're talking about today that I want to provide for you guys also. Let's not waste too much time, let's just jump right into it. So if you guys like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button as it really does help out the video and channel get a better place within that YouTube algorithm. And if you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the official release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So first off, let's go with some IGN articles with some discussions from 343 talking about why it looks like campaign and co-op might actually be delayed even longer than initially expected by the community. We do know that co-op is coming in with season two, which community originally expected to have at about three months into the game and with Forge coming in with season three about six months into the game, but that seems like that's getting pushed back even more. In this IGN article, Staten confirms that Season 1 now taking place for around 6 months instead of the planned 3. That means that modes have also been pushed back. Season 2 will begin on May 22nd with Season 3 most likely being around August and September. Continuing on saying we can't commit to any hard dates right now because we're seeing with this multiplayer beta other things might move up in priority stack for us. If it turns out our progression system isn't working the way we intended, if we need to move some of these bigger rocks sooner, then we as a team will make those decisions and will clearly communicate to our fans why we are doing certain things. So it does kind of suck that it looks like we have to wait even longer for co-op to come into the game, for even longer for Forge to get into this game as well, but it seems like this beta has really affected the workflow at 343, really taking in feedback from the community to really reprioritize what needs to be there on day one. And 343 is already taking steps to fix up some of the multiplayer issues, biggest one being the progression with already, they have a per game XP now with the multiplayer experience, as well as probably fixing up some of the progression and unlock system as well. And 343 even states here in these articles why they released the multiplayer early. Our previous multiplayer tech previews went a long way to battle testing our services and infrastructure from Joseph State and continues on saying, but as we prepare for a significant increase in the number of players jumping into Halo Infinite on launch day, December 8th, we just want to ensure all our systems are good to go. While you may experience some bumps and bugs during the beta period, it does mark the official start of season one with all day one maps and modes as well as the full season pass. We made the decision to extend season one to give ourselves more time to ensure season two meets our high quality bar and so we can finish development for season two in a healthy, sustainable way for our team. So now you're probably wondering, oh my gosh, six months with just this battle pass and the occasional fracture as well, that might not be enough content to hold people over. Well, a recent leak seems to suggest that we might be getting another battle pass so people can continue on for the next six months. So Asia, who's been leaking some content on Twitter, he was correct about the multiplayer releasing early on Monday. It says, seems like 343 is doing an additional battle pass for like 120 20 tiers for all the missing reach stuff dubbed the operation with each tier equating 500 experience points needed which honestly is one of my concerns i was like okay well now i'm progressing to the battle pass just fine for the most part right now obviously there's some improvements that need to be done that was like how is this battle pass going to last me six months to keep me returning to play because once i unlock everything in the past I mean, what else there to do? There is no overarching progression system, so you can't really progress through that. Only thing you really do is just play the game because you're having fun doing it. Now we do have the Fracture event happening this week as well, guys, which I will cover on this channel as soon as it does go live. And we also, looks like we will have an extended battle pass to 120 tiers as well. So that'd be great for us to grind through. But right now, this is all just the beta phase right now, guys. Don't forget, this is still a beta phase. We're tweaking and making sure things are playing as they should. So a really awesome thing happened on Sunday. That was the first tournament of HCS, guys. This was a North American Open. Had 400 plus teams train out for this right here, guys. And the bracket winners ended up becoming Optic Gaming, previously known as Envious. Optic Gaming crawled their way from the loser's bracket into the finals, going to a game five within the grand finals, and then going into another game five for the final reset ended up winning. It was a very close, fun match to watch. 
It's just so cool seeing Optic back in the Halo guys because it's one of the biggest gaming organizations involved with competitive Halo. I love to see it. The competitive scene is going to be great. There was over 70,000 concurrent people watching on YouTube and on Twitch as well. And these are just for like the opens. These aren't actually like full on tournaments with like prize pools at the end of the whole thing. So a lot of people are saying Halo is back and it's kind of feeling that way, especially with this amazing open that we had. But for how sweaty things are currently in the HCS, they're kind of transferring over to the multi player as well. Let me show you why. Halo Pro Snipe Down talks about his experience right now in matchmaking saying having to drop double my teammates damage and 28 kills in a Slayer to just win a Diamond 1 solo queue in Halo is not a fun gaming experience. Why am I only matching off of MMR? Please change the system and stop punishing pl high skilled players. Thank you very much. A community member Mimplis, who you guys all know, talks about his experience as well saying that the fact I get this at all in social within the first weeks shows volumes about the strict MMR, showing that there's not enough players in his region to play. Now Mintblitz is over in Australia, so the player pool that he has is much smaller, but this is opening week. There were like 200, 300,000, 400,000 probably concurrent players playing Halo Infinite right now. And the fact that he can't find a social match really shows how strict the skill-based matchmaking is right now within social. I've been coming across this experience as well where it seems like every lobby I get into for social match made games, everyone is just filled to the brim with like these HCS coatings and it's just super sweaty experience playing social, which I didn't really have that in Halo 5, but I certainly experienced that in Halo Infinite. Now I recently jumped into play ranked as well and ranked seemed like I had to carry absolutely the entire team. For my first six placement matches, I lost five of them. We won the first game. The only other game we won is because the other team had a bad start and quit out early. But I'm having games where I'm like top frag in the entire lobby, not just the team, but the lobby and still losing games. It's very frustrating. Again, this could be part of the beta experience. You might need to see the strict skill based matchmaking loosened up a little bit on social and also have more accurate matching when it comes to rank but again we'll keep an eye on the story as it progresses. And remember at the top of this video how I mentioned how it looks like 343 is working on a non Halo Infinite game? Well Xbox Insider Jez Corden talks about this within a recent podcast. You do expect 343 to make another game that's not Halo Infinite, right? But I have heard they've got another project they're working on right uh, now okay, that okay. isn't Halo Infinite. Oh, Halo. you mean that isn't Halo Infinite? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant that isn't Halo. No, that isn't um, Halo Infinite. Yeah, yeah. They are working on another project that isn't Halo Infinite. I know that much. So what Jez is saying there essentially is that 343 is working on a Halo game that isn't Halo Infinite. Obviously, these are leaks and rumors kind of to take them at face value for what you believe they are. But when Jez Corden says something like this, I listen. Now, is he exactly right? Maybe not. I think the biggest thing to know is that it sounds like Halo Infinite isn't going to be the only Halo game or Halo experience that we'll have in the future. As this story develops, I guarantee I'll let you guys know on this channel. If you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading a lot about daily. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.